Hello, I'm Tobias from Edguy. And I'm Jens from Edguy. And you are watching Linear Rock. Thank you so much. Okay, so welcome Tobias and Jens of Edguy to Linear Rock. It's a pleasure for us to have you here. So welcome back to Italy. Do you like our country? Of course. <laughs> yes, we do, definitely. <laughs> um, of course, uh, it's, it's, it's always been great here and uh, we've always had a strong support here. So, um, yeah, yeah, we like it. Okay. To cut a long story short, yes, we do. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so, Tinnitus Sanctus, which came out on 2008, uh, marked a step in a uh, direction which was more hard rock for Ed Guy. Uh, what we can expect from the new album, Age of the Joker, coming out end of August, is going to be the same, it's going to be a surprise. Tell us about it. Well, I think it's, uh, it's the same, uh, talking about uh, typical Ed Guy trademarks. Uh, but of course, on the other end, I think we have some very nice surprises on the album. I mean, I was surprised when hearing some of the results, uh, so it surprised me, so it will definitely surprise some of the, of the fans as well. But it's a good surprises. <laughs> okay, so it's, so it's a, do you want to add something? No, no, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I want to say it's, uh, it, it will surprise you just like Tinnitus Sanctus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it will be, uh, I think it's a great album with a lot of variety. That's what people can expect from it. And uh, the good thing about the album is I have the feeling when you, you listen to many different songs, many different new elements, uh, stuff that you have certainly not heard from Edka before, and at the same time you will... Um, immediately realize it's Ed Guy. When you hear 20 seconds, you know, this is Ed Guy in every passage. And I think that's that's an achievement. That's quite an achievement and it, it proves that, or oh, this is a proof um, for the fact that the band has really definitely a very strong own identity and that's the biggest achievement I think you can, you can get as a band. And finally, I think after 19 and a half years of our career, uh, we have achieved to have a unique signature sound, uh, and well, that's that's great. That makes that makes me proud and arrogant. <laughs> no, <laughs> no come on. So, uh, has the title and the artwork any particular meaning? Has it has a story behind? Something that you want to tell? Well, at least we wanted to have our band mascot, the Joker. We wanted to have him being part of the album cover, and uh, that's why the album. The album title fits fits pretty much. So Age of the Joker says something like, "Okay, now it's our time again. We're back with a new with a new album." But still, it sounds very monumental and very big. And it's uh, it's definitely a cool title, I think. It is. Uh, in the early days, um, talking about 1998, uh, the period of Vainglory Opera, uh, you, Tobias. Uh, define the Ed Guy music as still. Um, how would you describe it nowadays if you have to compare it to that definition? Still. Still. Did I say that? Yes. We st are strong as still. Is it really still and, uh, and not stole? Maybe? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> steal. Yeah, yeah, we steal that. from this band, and yeah. we steal a <laughs> no. couple of things from this yeah. band. That, that's <laughs> what that guy is all about. <laughs> we are children of no, steel. I mean steel. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I don't know, but it sounded good, didn't it? I mean, <laughs> it's uh, when you start as a band, you want to have... Of course, I know that we were really um, aware of the fact that we had to find a certain label for our music back then. It's something that you condemn later on. Yeah. Um, because you wanna you wanna belong to a certain genre. You th you 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 wanna come across a certain way. You wanna do certain pictures. You wanna have certain things on your cover artwork. And you wanna make sure that this is the way you are perceived as bad from your potential audience. You don't have an audience back. Oh, we didn't have an audience back then. We had a potential audience, and we wanted to win that audience by being a strong. A, to, going in, into one direction in a very particular way and uh, nowadays I would say we are still we are a heavy metal band but we are much more open-minded we are much more relaxed and I think in those 13 years or 14 years since since Vainglory Opera I think we have become relaxed enough to say it doesn't really matter what our music is labeled it's just great, but still, I would consider us a heavy metal band. I would, okay, I'd say that. 
And considering the joking that we had before, stealing, there was um, a story uh, of the intro of that album that was a bit similar to Europe, the final countdown. Um, is that correct? Or, uh, and you, you is, mean, I mean, you mean the song? Yes. It, it is similar. The song is, yes. is that correct as well? Uh, I mean, is there any story? Was that a joke? No. Or, uh, I mean, was done was no, done on was. purpose, or uh, it just happened? It was a serious robbery. It was, <laughs> uh, it was. No, it was. A, it, it's just. It's just like um, <clears throat> you know. Everybody loves the final countdown. At least everybody I know, and it's it's pretty. It's it's got similarities, and we have been influenced by that by that band by Europe, and um, it's not a tribute on purpose. But later on, we found out that it, that there are real uh, similarities. Yes. To that band and okay. that song in particular, but it was not really a story behind that. It was just I had that keyboard and I thought, this is a great riff. It sounds familiar, but I don't know what it is. And uh, okay. well, then all of a sudden you find out, wow, <laughs> it's the biggest hit in the European <laughs> rock history. That's where I know it from. <laughs> yeah. And well. we knew you like Europe because you also did an acoustic version of uh, "A Die for You." With yeah. The with I cry for you. I cry for you. I cry for you. Yeah, it's true. Uh, which is very good. Yeah, very good cover. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. okay. It's actually a cover version of the acoustic version that Europe did on their Best Of album. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it's a it's a great band. We just played with Europe a few few weeks ago. And yeah. It was a uh, was a great experience for you. Well, I don't. Still a good band, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I haven't seen so much, but yes, I agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going back to the new album, uh, Robin Hood, the, the song is very particular, uh, and uh, in the middle part it recalls a bit of Iron Maiden, Seven Son of a Seven Son. No! <laughs> do, you, do you agree? Iron <laughs> you, so it's, it's not done, uh, I mean, it's not a tribute or something no. like that? No! Of course, okay. yeah, yeah, it is, of course. It is a tribute. <laughs> never, right. no, none of us have, has ever heard of that British newcomer band. <laughs> Iron Maiden. Who's Iron Maiden? No, honestly <laughs> speaking, I like Iron Maiden, and you know what? I have to say that. We played with Maiden this, 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 um, no, last, last summer, summer. Last summer. This summer, one summer ago, one summer before this summer. And, uh, and after our show, they said they liked it. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, interesting story, exciting yeah. story. Well, I was there. Oh, that's a great I heard compliment, it. actually. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, no, but but seriously, it's uh, of course it's it's a uh, it's a tribute, yeah. it's a homage, it's a, a parody, mm -hmm. it's all that. But okay. still, I have, I have a lot of respect for Iron Maiden. I got all their albums, and uh, I got all their albums probably in several versions. Uh, right. I, I've always been a big fan of Iron Maiden, and I've always been a big fan of Bruce Dickinson and Steve Harris's songwriting. Nevertheless, I think it's quite odd that all heavy metal bands, or many heavy metal bands, sing about legendary figures such as Alexander the Great, or um, Attila the Hun, or Odin. Benjamin Bragg. Yeah, He-Man, Benjamin Blümchen. Yeah. <laughs> no, but everybody sings about those... You know what yeah, I mean. Okay. And, uh, and we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we wanted. We, we, you know, I was wondering why never has ever sung about Robin Hood, at least as far as I know. And I was quite surprised that nobody had a song called Robin Hood because okay. all sing about Alistair Crowley, Mr. Crowley, and. <laughs> oh, we do too. We have a song <laughs> about uh, Alistair Crowley Memorial Boogie bonus track. But still, there is, uh, there is so many songs about great historical figures, so we said, the king of all swashbucklers. Is Robin Hood, we gotta write a song about it. And of course it's a homage and a tribute and a parody of Iron Maiden too. Okay. But it's very res in a very respectful way because like I said, uh, we we all have been great fans and we are all still great fans of Iron Maiden. We are all fans of Iron Maiden. Everybody's yeah, everybody fans. is. Okay. My mother not. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's good for Iron Maiden. <laughs> Okay, concerning another track, uh, Nobody's Hero, is a very immediate and direct song. Um, concerning that, how is it difficult nowadays to be or to have heroes? Oh, well, you know, it's, the, the song is not, it's not, an, it's not really about a hero, it's just about the, it's about the, 
the odd fellows that are not beautiful, the beautiful personalities that are not beautiful at first sight, the people who are not in the spotlight, the people who are not on the sunny side of mm -hmm. life. Uh, it's it's about all those forgotten, those forgotten people who fall by the wayside, who are probably, who are probably not appropriate for our modern fast life, who just, who just live in the shadows, who just, who just, kind of, stay behind, and uh, and that's what nobody's hero is about. Is about those beautiful personalities that we. We hardly notice, but that are there, and and, uh, and and that's it's it's about it's a it's a tribute to the underdog. Okay. That's that's what the song is about. It's it's pretty much a tribute to the underdog. And uh, the long song, uh, "Behind the Gates to Midnight World," uh, nine minutes opera, very long one. Um, is that a special song for you, as it is special for us to listen to it, and uh, lyrically? Uh, was what is it about, and uh, when the inspiration for that came from? It's it's about the the gates to midnight world. It's about uh, it's 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 an equivalent to me, a synonym for the point of entry to um, to uh, to uh, to the, to the realization uh, of the existence of divinity. Okay, that was pretty much. Uh, it's really hard to explain in a few words, but you know, it's 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 uh, it's about those those goosebumps moment that moments okay. that we have when we get aware of the presence of divinity, and when when I can just speak for myself when I when I get a proof of the existence of divinity, and this is. Uh, Entering the gates to midnight world is just midnight world is just because you know some things by by the night time some things seem so clear to me and in the morning you wake up you've written something the day before uh, or the the night before and you wake up and the mood is completely different because it was that mood in the first place when you wrote it and by the dark of the of, of the night and and it's it's that it's that it describes that moment. When, 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 it, when scales fall from your eyes and you sense something that you do not sense every moment. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty much, it's about more things than that, but that's pretty much the core of the song. Did you choose already the first single of the album? And is there any new video in the plans, any Ed Guy special kind of video? Well, we're going to do a video for Robin Hood. Okay. Uh, which I'm pretty sure is going to be very special, so I'm looking forward to the video shoot because um, I have the feeling that maybe this could be some fun. You know, usually video shooting is uh, for the band, it's kind of boring because you're sitting there most of the time waiting for the technicians to set up the next, uh, the next setup and everything, but uh, this time I have a feeling that this is, could be fun. Especially the part when Dick is naked. It's really <laughs> that, that's not fun. I've seen it. <laughs> and no? uh, so, can you tell us a little bit more about it? I mean, where you're gonna shoot it, and uh, who's well, playing Robin Hood? None of you. Well, you're yeah, doing well, that, Tobias. <laughs> of course, Robin Hood was not too tall, so uh, so <laughs> the only one who could actually do it was no. It's, uh, it's it seems like it's gonna be me. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, okay. yeah, of course. When we will be able to see it very soon? I mean, or after after the album release? As, by the end of August. Okay, so no, we'll by the by the by, 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 sooner, 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 sooner. No, than we can shoot the video August. in <laughs> two weeks. We shoot it today in two weeks. Two okay. weeks from today. Um, last year, Tobias, you recorded two albums with Avantasia. Um, did you work on both projects together? same time as Ed Guy album, um, do you set yourself differently when you work you know, on Avantasia and Ed Guy? And does the fact that these were maybe done quite same time influence each other in a sense? I, I never work on two projects at the same time because it do, it just doesn't make sense. You will lose energy, you will split energy. So I was when by the time the Avantasia album was done, it was over for me. I res, I was resetting my hard drive, 
and uh, well, not my hard drive, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was I was I was switching to to a new mode and okay. completely completely started from scratch, and um, that that was that, that's very important, I think, because if you do too many things at the same time, you will you will get lost. You will get lost somewhere. And writing wise, it's pretty much the same because um, at first I. I'm, <laughs> I uh, set off onto a quest uh, for for a, the great melody and a great harmony, and that's what I do. And that I do those kinds of things without thinking about who's gonna play them and and what we are, we, wh how we are going to arrange it. Sometimes with Edgar, with Avantasia, when uh, when I have the the voice of Michael Kiske, for example, or, or Bob Catley in the back of my mind. Of course, subconsciously, I may write a little differently because I have a different singer on my mind. With that guy, I write for myself, for my for my voice. So, uh, so it's it, there may be a little difference when it comes to that. But in general, I would say it's it's the same process. Creatively, you just you just set out, um, or you just you're just in quest for that for a great song, for a great melody, no matter who is going to play and sing it. And what you're looking for in Avantasia that you cannot find in that guy and each wise? That's really hard to say. I mean, of course, it's 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 a good it's a good variety that I get from Avantasia. It's like um, I wouldn't want to miss one of them. I mean, of course, Ed guy is something we've been together for twenty years now, and it's something that you you just don't want to miss because it's 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 a part of your life. It's just like like a family. It's been constantly there and it's been constantly something that um, that that designed my life or or, or uh, that that it was the biggest part of my life so uh, Avantasia is more like a vacation from it that sometimes we need and uh, and and it's it's just of course it's a, it's a big dream to work with people like Klaus Mein and Alice Cooper and members of Kiss and members of Juice Priest and Magnum and uh, da da dee da da da. It's it's really th that's the biggest thing that you can have as a fan. Uh, it's it's the biggest the biggest achievement. Yeah. But still, it's a different thing. It's 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 no continuous project. It's just something that I did a couple of times and for a certain period. But it it has never really been a big part of uh, of a long period of my yeah. life. But do you think that that influenced, in a sense, the direction of your composing in that guy as well? The fact of working with so different musicians and uh, doing maybe a slightly different kind of music, in a sense, in your personal growing as an artist, uh, I don't set think a different direction? In that's, I, I don't think songwriting-wise or direction-wise. I think it's just, of course, it... it um, it brings you it brings you to to a new level of musicality uh, when you when you work with with people like Jorn Lande for example you know who are yeah. or Oli Hartmann or or Sasha Pei too who is who is so great in in every possible way he's a he's a he's a great guitar player and he's a great producer and he he has so many ideas. Uh, even as a producer for Ed Guy, you know you can learn a lot from those people, and of course it's it's great to yeah, like like I said to be on tour with with Jorn, and to hear him sing like God every night, and you just think this bastard is so great. How does he do it? And, and that influences you, of course. And and Oli Hartmann, great musician, he's got perfect pitch. He's a great vocalist, a great guitar player, a great songwriter. Of course, you learn from those people. Yeah. Um, the evolution of Ed Guy included a lot of different styles during the years. Um, that's what I read, you know, on some forums also from the fans that uh, there was some epic, symphonic, power metal, uh, also a bit of trash metal uh, you did in the past, and of course now our rock direction. Is that a natural evolution that you guys had? or was in a sense planned, you know, because some fans are saying, you know, they, they're trying to do a lot of stuff and maybe it's their 
maybe they prefer something better than something else. Which is your perception of it? Well, Just a natural growing or a Of course, it's, it's a natural growing and I think it's necessary to keep it interesting for ourselves. I mean, uh, we, we uh, want to redefine ourselves as good as possible and keeping, of, of course, the trademarks, uh, which is the music that we all like. Um, but to keep it interesting, you have to look for new challenges. You have to try to find new ways of arranging and of doing stuff, of making music. And uh, well, it's it's just necessary to do those things to keep it interesting for us. And uh, I think it's always very good to to have the ability to surprise yourself and uh, the fans of your music. Next October tenth, you play in Milano at the Alcatraz. And Kotak will be the special guest of the show. Uh, was the connection with him, Klaus Mein, that uh, you collaborated, Tobias, with? Uh, is I mean, it's his fault, the fact that Kotak are, is touring with you. On how, which was uh, the connection? How did it happen? No, we, we were on tour with the Scorpions on their, on their farewell tour. And, okay. and that was, we got along with them very well. We were treated very very nice and uh, it was like it was almost like a very very family like um, uh, atmosphere there we were included in everything we were involved with everything they did there and we were always we were not separated the bands were not separated from each other we were hanging out every every on every day basically we were hanging out together so um, so it was quite natural that uh, we would we would keep this a family matter, a family internal matter. Ma matter. It's a very incestuous uh, business, <laughs> you know. It's it's but but it's it's he's a he's a nice guy. He's a great guy. And I think it was the two drummers, James and Felix. They were they were uh, I think starting to make those plans, and um, I think James just said, I I, I want to do tour with that guy. With my band, with Kotak, and and we said like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it. You, okay, yeah, then let's it's do it. It's a kind of returning the favor or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know <laughs> if it's returning a favor. I think it's a win-win situation because we like each other and everybody's going to have great fun and we're going to okay. do a good tour. So, so uh, it's it's not. It would not be fair to say we return a favor All because right. the band Kotak is strong enough to be sure. on tour with us. Not for only yeah, but favor you were talking reason. about you know family vibe, yeah, yeah. so well, it's, it's like it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, in it's, yeah. the matter of friendship. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That that was the question uh, about. And any anticipation on the tour? Do you have anything special in mind uh, for the stage? Anything that you're preparing, which you can maybe tell us something about? We're gonna do a big show. I mean, after such a long time, it's the first time we're gonna do a tour again. Uh, as a headliner, we've uh -huh. been on tour, like like I said, supporting the Scorpions, which was great, yeah. great arenas, big arenas. But we were supporting Maiden, we were doing uh, a, a support show for Aussie in Japan, and you know, doing a lot of support stuff this those uh, during those last years. But initially, we are a headlining band, and we've always brought a big stage show, and it feels so great after almost three years without a proper European Ed Guy headlining tour to come back and show that we can do our own headlining tour with a big show. So um, we, we can't say too much about the stage yet. The cover, the cover artwork is going to be, I mean, the, the gesture you see on the cover, it will be the core of the stage. Say so we will have walkways, we'll have a big drum riser and, and everything. Um, but we can't, we can't say too much yet. Okay. It will be big because it will be our show again. Okay. And um, concerning the set, uh, it will be focused on the whole career of the band? Yeah. Uh, okay. Not just uh, the no. last records and, no. Uh, no, because no. of the change of direction. I mean, you it's play not, also... It's not, really, it's not really a change of direction. <laughs> I think we've always had all kinds of songs, you yes, know. Sure. We've always, even if you listen to Vainglory Opera, you were just mentioning we sounded like like Europe <laughs> in some songs, and that's that's true. But but that's a hard. We've always had those hard rock roots. If you listen to to the first demos we did, it was just hard rock. Yeah. There was it it was you know. And by the way, it's really hard for me to draw a line between hard rock and heavy metal and rock and speed metal and melodic metal and whatever. 
we've always had we've always had a, a big variety and on this new album that I mean this new album shows that in a, in, a, in a very great way the variety on that age of the Joker is so great it's it's probably the biggest variety we've ever had and still you can hear it's Ed guy and that's something that's that, that we've always had but we have we have pushed it to the max with this album and uh, that's why I don't really think we have changed in style it's just we have now we have the the, the skills to really to really uh, explore the extremes of our genre and uh, on, on that tour we will not only play new songs but we will not only play old songs we will just play a good best of set with a few new songs or some new songs thrown in. Will you play Babylon? I don't know. Because I Maybe. remember I was there in 2004 in Milan, the people were shouting, you know, to have that song. And it wasn't planned. In oh, yeah, the we set. did it. We did it. And you added, you know, to the set, that, which was very kind of you. And you did it brilliantly, even if it wasn't prepared. So, and maybe this time. Uh, I mean, you you play it again because you know Italian people love that song. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really weird because I think Babylon is not in Italy; it's in Iraq. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. it's really, it's really, it's really weird. But um, Felix will hate us because yeah. Felix really hates that song. <laughs> okay. Because it's a lot of work for him because it's so fast. Okay. And he wants to sit there and just play relaxed and not okay. play like. Uh, like a speed metal drummer. But anyway, uh, we, we should consider it. All right. Okay, thanks. Do you want to leave any special message to the Italian fans? Um, Italy. Okay. You know what? Besides that guy, I really love Doro, <laughs> Blind Guardian, Gamma Ray, Halloween, Halloween. Halloween UDO, except. except the Scorpions. The Scorpions, <laughs> except uh, uh, Pink Cream 69. Rammstein. Rammstein. <laughs> Everybody. Uh, 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 here. Uh, Anybody. Und, komm. <laughs> Hast du nicht gesehen? Schlaf ich tot. Alle. Okay, thank you so much. And we're looking forward to have you back in Italy for the show. Thank Next you. Next October. And go buy the album End of August. End of August, Age of the Joker. Best album of the century.